everybody, let's chat about 4.3 shapes of graphs. So we're going to use some of what we learned uh, in 4.1 to uh, help us out with uh, figuring out what do the graphs of functions look like, uh, right? Just based on the function itself, like the uh, the expression, if you will. Uh, this is pretty amazing um, that we can figure out as much detail as we can um, about a function's graph without even seeing it. Um, so uh, yeah, what's what are we going to do here? What can derivatives tell us about the function's graph? Um, so we're going to look first at increasing and decreasing. Can we know where a function is going up and where a function is going down based on derivatives? So when we think of say increasing right now, we always think left to right. So moving from left to right, it's going up, which is what we see. Um, well, yeah, uh, what, what might a derivative, um, you know, how, how does a derivative uh, connect with a function increasing? Is there something about a derivative that would tip us off that uh, the original function is going up? So we thought, well, derivative is about slopes of tangent lines, right? Um, if a derivative is going upwards, then at any point, the slope of the tangent line um, would always be doing something similar. Um, it would always be positive, right? It would always be pointing upwards. So if f of x is increasing, then f prime of x will be positive. In a similar way, uh, what if f of x is decreasing? going down from left to right. Then you would think, okay, at any point, the slope of the tangent line would be pointed downwards. In other words, f prime of x would be less than zero, would be negative. So where this is going, um, what we can do is say, hey, you know, if you tell me an x value, then I could plug that value into the derivative. If I got a positive result, then I would know that the function is increasing there. If I plugged an x value into the derivative and I got a negative result, then I would know that the function is decreasing there. Okay. This leads to our, what we'll call the increasing and decreasing test. Um, so it'll, this will be a way to figure out which intervals um, the function is increasing and which intervals over which intervals the function is decreasing. So let's check out these steps. Step number one, um, we're going to find the critical numbers. Um, that's where the derivative is either equal to zero or does not exist. Once we have the critical numbers, then uh, step number two um, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense right now until we do an example, but we're going to take those criticals. We're going to mark them on a domain line. So we're going to like think of this number line and then mark off where those criticals happen. Then we're going to test a value from each interval that that would create from the domain line. We're going to test values into um, f prime of x there. And that will tell us whether those intervals are increasing or decreasing in the original function. OK, let's jump into an example, see how this works. Um, we'll start off with uh, an example that's relatively light, just to get the idea. Um, we're going to get some harder examples later. So, okay, we'll just start with this. Uh, find the intervals of increasing and decreasing for f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x. Let me switch over here. All right, example. find intervals of increasing and decreasing. I'll just abbreviate like so. And our function is f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x. OK. Uh, so we're just going to go through our steps, right? Step number one, number one was to find the critical numbers. So to do that, we need a derivative. 
Sounds good. Derivative, derivative, okay. Then to go further for the criticals, we need to find where is our derivative equal to zero. So we'll set it equal to zero and solve. Uh, the key to solving where something's equal to zero is factoring. I'm gonna say, hey, these all have a six in common. Right. And hopefully we can factor further and I'm pretty sure we can. Let's see, this is gonna be x plus two, x minus one. And so from these two factors, we can see x will equal negative two and x will equal one will be our two solutions. We also need to take a look at where our derivative does not exist. Forget about that one. Uh, this derivative, well, it's a polynomial, so it will always exist. There's no uh, cusps, really what we're looking for. Even vertical asymptotes too. But yeah, there you go. All right, that's D and E, or excuse me, that's none for the D and E. So we get these two criticals, perfect. Um, what came next? We wanna mark these two numbers on a domain line. So at this point, we want to note what is the domain of our function, 2x cubed, plus 3x squared minus 12x, uh, our original function. You think, well, it's a polynomial. The domain is the entire number line. Uh, it's kind of like, again, we're looking for, are there any places where the function does not exist, basically? Are we ever dividing by zero? Nope, not going to happen. Um, so we're, we're all set here. Okay, so once we know we've got the entire number line, we're going to mark our two critical numbers. So I'm just going to say, okay, here's a domain line. Um, this one goes to infinity in both directions, and I'm going to indicate these. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you do it. You know, you don't need to mark zero or anything else. Um, just make sure you put the critical numbers in order. So I'm going to put negative two first and then one. And with that, you can see we've divided up our domain into these three intervals, this one, this one, and this one. All right, here's the idea. Because we know these are the only locations where the derivative equals zero, then whatever is happening here, um, you know, as far as increasing or decreasing goes, we know all of these points have the same behavior. Every point here is either increasing or every point is decreasing. Same for here, same for here. Because again, these are the only places where the derivative equals zero and there's no places where it does not exist, then we only need to test one value from each of these and that will tell us what's happening in each interval, whether the whole thing is increasing or whether the whole thing is decreasing. So that's step number three, test a value in each interval into our derivative. And luckily we found that already when we had to do uh, the criticals. So let's see, for this first interval, let's just pick, pick good uh, test values. You know, keep things small if you can, or like nice numbers. So I would say here, you know, maybe we'll take x equals negative three, be a good choice. Um, we could pick any number from negative infinity to negative two. Negative three sounds good. Hey, what about this middle one? What would be a good choice for our middle interval? Something between negative two and one. How about zero? You know, we could pick negative one. That'd be fine. Um, zero will probably make our life a little bit faster. And then something here for this last interval. I'm going to pick x equals two. Something between one and infinity. Notice we don't want to pick the criticals themselves. That wouldn't tell us anything. We got to pick right numbers that are between um, on the, the interval itself. Okay, so we'll take the, these three numbers. We're going to plug them all into the derivative. Um, let me note what the derivative was just one more time here. So it's on the screen. Here it was from a moment ago. Okay, so we're going to take f prime negative three, f prime zero, 
and f prime two. All right. Uh, f prime negative three. So okay, well, you know, we can crunch these numbers out. Um, negative three goes into there, becomes positive nine. Negative three there. Uh, when it's all done, you can check my answer. I got that whole thing to be twenty-four. Okay. So what does that tell us? So the fact that it's 24 isn't important. It's the fact that this is a positive number. So we know that in this section of the domain for our function, the derivative is positive. I'm going to put a big plus sign and maybe circle it. What does that tell us? It tells us it's increasing there. And so this is telling me my derivative is positive, so I know that my function is increasing. You know what even some people like to do is draw like an up arrow. You know, it's going up, it's increasing for that section. Okay, let's try zero. We plug zero into the derivative. This one's a little bit easier. We're gonna get negative 12. Again, it's not the fact that it's negative 12 that's important, it's just the fact that it's negative. So you might put a big negative sign there, or some people even like to draw this like downward arrow. It's decreasing. And finally, f of two, f prime two, excuse me, uh, plugging that in, I got 24. Again here, um, again, a positive result is what's important. So I'll put a plus, and again, it's like it's increasing. And there we go, we have it. Um, f of x is increasing. Check it out on two intervals. So from negative infinity to negative two, and then again, starting at one. So I'm gonna put a union from one to infinity. F of x is decreasing just in that middle interval from negative two to one. And there we have it. Very nice. Hey, let's uh let's graph this really fast. See if we are right. Highly recommend this in homework. Why not? You know, do all the work and uh, then confirm that you're right. Okay, so there it is, we got this kind of up down motion because of the cube. Let's see, if I click on here, then it kind of highlights, it actually highlights intercepts and maximums and minimums. So I'm just gonna sort of hover there, yep. So it's going up and up and up until we reach negative two. Then from negative two to one, it's going down. And then from one onwards, it's going back up. And we did it. We go. All right, you guys, let's stop this video here. We're going to uh, go further in the next one.